Thank you very much and welcome back. I appreciate it. Happy year. Thanks for the continued support. All right, Ninva. Nine charges, summons an arcane banner that lets them draw extra cards every turn. I think Ninva is the Happy Cloud combo champion. Uh, this hand's only got one shard, so we're going to redraw. This hand's pretty good. It's got two into three on the play. It's going on Immortal. Yeah, I don't know if this deck is actually good or not. I'm two and one in this gauntlet right now. Could be a McBombus deck the other night, but that matchup is probably pretty reasonable for an arc a deck like this. No relics is probably a good pickup. So I can play this out and grab another, grab a diamond. Probably curl hauling planes into Brilliant, so. Brilliant, what's going on, Marty? People from Marty Chat. Brilliant says, whenever it deals damage to my opponent, uh, my troops get plus one, plus one permanently, so I just want to get that down and get it going ASAP. Ooh, that's, that's actually pretty good. So I have one copy of Wise Magistrate in my main deck, and this is actually a pretty, pretty powerful hate card. I like, I like these little, I like these little things. Yeah, I should have, I should have played the Kyol Shard on two, just in case. The Anarillix gems are, um, this can't be blocked except by non-prismatic cards, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna, v I'm gonna Valor, my Howling Plains Alpha, I'm gonna play my Wise Magistrate, I'm gonna smash with both these. It's possible I should actually smash before I play the Wise Magistrate. It would lose the buff on the Wise Magistrate, but then, um, it would discourage my opponent from, like, trans, it would encourage my opponent to, like, transmog this as opposed to this. So this is, this is like one of their payoff combo cards, right? Whenever you gain charges at a storm counter, and when it dies, you like summon random clouds or something, you sacrifice to summon random clouds. So Protector Defender gives all my troops plus one, plus one with the gem that it has in it. Uh, Lingrave can come out here. We have a pretty quick clock here. If they have, uh, they have a way to take the Wise Magistrate off the table or like Transmog or Rune Mind it or something, they can probably go off next turn. But if they don't go off next turn, we'll probably be in a pretty good spot. Cyclone Shaper lets them play Eyes of the Heart, I believe is the, the Time Walk card that gives them extra charges next turn. Is this actually lethal? This is 10, 15. This is one short of lethal currently. Which is a little unfortunate, because if it was lethal, it would demand interaction from them. Might. Mm, that's a good point. Is is there a swift strike gem for this? There is, right? Maybe because the this has pseudo evasion on its own, can't be blocked except by non-prismatic cards. Maybe I should have swift strike in that by default. That's a good point. Maybe uh, I'm definitely going to swap that post reserves in this matchup. The nice thing here is because this is evasive, uh, they do actually need to kill me this turn, so that's a time walk. Yeah, yeah this should definitely have... Yep, there's another time walk. This is Hex. Hex. TCG, Hex Shards of Fate, whatever you want to call it. I think we're actually going to play with, a little bit with the opponent's deck tomorrow. I just had this deck in a gauntlet already, and I was going to play a couple of matches before bed anyway, so I figured I might as well stream them. So their deck is basically... it's ba They're basically playing like a taking turn style deck. I think we're, we're dead done on the Mastery of Time here, right? Uh, I guess they they need two Mastery of Times to kill us here. High Joltage, yep. I 
So they get a bunch of random clouds here. These ones draw cards. They have three draws. The important thing to note about Wise Magistrate, even though it's a hate card, it only increases the cost of cards that are already in their hand when they play a card. So if they draw a card off the top of their deck here with a splashy, it's not going to have its costs increased by Wise Magistrate. Yeah, Tom, and like that's that's part of the problem with Immortal in the Auction House right now is like a lot of the prices are like super gouged because people, a lot of people, I'm not faulting you, but like a bunch of people are like doing what you're doing right now, which is, um, which is just like putting cards up for like obnoxious prices. Or just like random prices. Are they, are they dead to the Brilliant Tanner Alex, right? Because this is, this is just unblockable, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, there, there just aren't... I mean, they can exhaust my things here, but like this, they can't They can't be targeted, right? Blocked or targeted by non-prismatic cards. So prismatic cards mean two shard cards, double, double color cards, basically. No, I'm just streaming Hex because I was going to play some Hex anyways. I play a lot of Magic during the day. It's nice to take a break. I like playing card games. It's nice to just do something that's a little bit different. It's not. It's not like Menace. It's like it's it's a pseudo unblockability. So basically, think of it. This card can only be blocked by multicolored cards. Yeah, it's it's more 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 similar to like Fear, right? All right, so you're dead. And post reserves, this matchup should get a lot better for us. I'm going to put Swift Strike in here. Because that should definitely just be the gem that's in there. Yes, he means sitting there, like, diddling the rest of my troops' time, hoping I, like, click through something or mess up. All right, so I've got a bunch of Wise Magistrates and a bunch of Drowned Shrines. So their deck draws a lot of cards. This said each champion can only draw one card each turn. So these... So this is a... I'll explain this more when we get into the game, but for now I'm just going to do this really quickly. So this is a customizable card, and while I'm reserving and during deck building, I can change the customizations this card has. So I'm going to change the customization. Actually, one in Crush is probably good on here. Yeah, one in Crush is probably good in here. Um, how do I want to reserve this? Probably Martyr's. Pr is Martyr good here? Is Martyr good here? Moonrise Elder is probably slow. No, I, I want Anthem, my team, I think, for my, my major. Yeah, that's fair. I probably just want permanent base, permanent base things and pressure. I'm going to bring my curve down a little bit from these Hero of Legend and Intrepid Conjurer, maybe. Let's just do that. I kind of like Swift Strike, Tom. Sw Swift Strike is important because it triggers with the Major. So Swift Strike lets Anna Relics trigger his Anthem, and then the rest of my team hits for more damage when he connects. So Swift Swift Strike is good. In fact, someone else just pointed that out in chat, and I'm gonna I'm gonna change his major to be his minor to be Swift Strike by default, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. And that's one of the things that's like really gonna be awesome to explore in this format, is there's gonna be a ton of sweet different gem combinations, especially in like the double gem cards or combinations of like multiple single gem cards. What's going on, Camo? Well, this isn't going to be a longer stream. My magic, my non-magic streams are usually under two hours. So gems are like customization. So this card is modal, depending on what what colors your deck is, and then what um, 
it's different. It, do, it does different things depending on what colors your deck is and then what things you want it to do within those colors. So shards are like lands. So the resources I'm playing out are shards. When I refer to gems, I refer to these little these little nicks here. So this guy has two customizations. And the, his first customization is he makes my team bigger. And the second one is he has swift strike, which is like first strike. And this guy has plus one attack and crush. What's the average cost of decks and hex? Um, anywhere there's there's always there's always cheaper tiered decks each season, and there's always more expensive decks each season. So the cheaper tier decks usually are fifty to hundred bucks. Um, there's budget decks in the ten to twenty five dollar range, uh, and then there's tier one decks that definitely range all the way up into like you know close to one hundred and fifty or two hundred bucks depending on what they are. So. Unlike a lot of the games, uh, Hex is a full buy, sell, trade, secondary market, so the market prices can fluctuate like in Magic. So. We're missing our third resource here, which kind of sucks. That's, uh, that's like a pseudo third resource. So do I want to play... So this is, this is basically... This is very similar to like a... Uh, a land of war elf so i can play my three drops next turn alternatively i could just go intrepid conjurer plus valor here i think i'm gonna start by attacking and see what they do actually turbo p is a, turbo p is on my list of decks to play in immortal i've seen some people posting results with it which looks sweet i think i'm just gonna go intrepid conjurer valor my intrepid conjurer here so this is a two one for one that it says when it becomes valorous you get to make a copy of it That's unfortunate. What does this do? Rowdy, gain healthy... So, my opponent played a bit of interaction there. It says, revert and transform target troop into a random artifact constant or troop minus one. So there's a little bit of variance on that card, but you can definitely mitigate some of it by choosing to target things that generally cost less. So if we hit a diamond shard, we're going to be in a pretty good spot because we'll be able to go Howling Brave into Wise Magistrate. If we miss on a resource, hopefully we draw another one drop so we can go Howling Brave plus the other one drop. They're also just like down to 14 here as well because we just like had this four power in play, just like beating them to death here slowly. Making some blockers here makes sense for them. This can deal two damage from Exhausted Your Bow. would be surprised to see them kill some of my stuff. Am I dead? Okay, so Runebound is another piece of powerful interaction. Um, it says, take a card on the chain or in play and transform it into a mysterious rune. So it kind of takes my card and slides it over here, and it stays in the stasis state until I draw a resource. So hopefully I draw a resource. We want to do that for a little bit. Yeah, generally, Marty, like, it's like any any good combo deck in most TCG games, right? Like, one, one hate piece isn't going to be enough to lock my opponent out of the game. However, multiple heat pieces is often going to be often going to be enough to lock my opponent out of the game. Yeah. Yep. So good chance we die next turn. Just you know, kept two resources on the draw here and just bricked off and died. Stuff that happens. So hex has um, hex uses the digital design space to kind of reduce some of the variance you have in your opening hand with regards to your resources, but it. Yeah, I'm going to start taking extra turns here. I guess we're not really dead until they hit an Eyes of Winter, because Eyes of Winter is the one that lets them get extra charges. All right, man. Well, if we would have hit a resource last turn, we would have had that and this. All right. They've drawn enough cards here that we're probably dead. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to concede and move on to the next one here. We have enough hate pieces and enough pressure that if we hit three resources in three turns, we probably run them out of most games. I think I'm pretty happy with Hazard. Honestly, maybe I just want another Intrepid Conjurer on the play here. I think I do. I think I just probably want max pressure. It's like want all my one drops. Yeah, Hex is, Hex is uh, really well designed by and large. The game plan is quite fantastic. It's like, it's kind of like I described as like what magic would be if magic was designed today as opposed to 1993. The resource system is really elegant. Yeah, sounds great. <clears throat> Got uh, three resources on the play. Got a 
variety of threats here. We've got a drone train. Maybe I should have let on diamond there so I could play wise magistrate on two. Very possible. Intrepid conjure right on time. So I'm gonna play the Howling Plains Elf, I think, here. This is the one I want them to kill kill the most. I don't really care about its effect. And then next turn I can go Remnant of Life into like two drop plus Intrepid Conjurer. And then the following turn I can go two drop plus uh Yeah, I'm at the I'm at the bare minimum Crusader slots. I'm at the bare minimum Crusader slots, so. I think I want to get Wise Magistrate going here rather than the Drown Train ASAP just because Wise Magistrate puts pressure into play, which is nice. So this is a little bit of disruption and it and it gets more things into play. My Protector Defender, this is another. So not every card in Hex is customizable. It's ones the sockets are, and the sockets of this one is this one just anthems my team while it's in play, which is nice. Kinda. The fact that Wise Magistrate doesn't prevent cards that they draw that turn from getting cheaper is a big deal. Draw a card, then choose and discard a card. Well, that, that might be useful later, I suppose. Hmm. So I could Valor here and then attack, but that's a little bit bad if they have... I think I just want to go Protector, Defender, plus Drone, Train here. We could get Runebound or something here. No, we could still get Runebound on their turn. Next one, I get tip for a good bit of power. Something I haven't mentioned is, so we looked at my opponent's champion power earlier. I haven't had enough resources for my new element. So for nine charges, so basically when they've played nine-ish resources, they get to summon a thing that lets them draw an extra card every turn. My champion says for four charges, so when I played four resources, it gives me, lets me go true plus three, plus three, and crush until end of turn. What are the remnants? The remnants are akin to uh, Shocklands, basically. They're a, a dual resource. I'm going to attempt to Valor this, which should encourage them to transmog if they have it. Makes a copy. I'm going to go ahead and champ power this one, I think. Just, like, punch face this turn. Hopefully this is enough pressure that, like, my opponent plays a piece of uh, troop disruption if they have it. And then we'll get to go ahead and play this wise magistrate out and just rail them. They're into three. I have a drown shrine and a wise magistrate here, so hopefully these two together, one of them will stick around and they'll be enough to lock them out of the game here. Yeah, that's a good way to describe them. Hexes, hexes dual lines are kind of like fetch lines for basics, so they only make one color or the other. Alright, there's a rune bind on that, so if they have a transmog here, they could do their thing next turn potentially. And they could start time walking here a little bit, but again, Wise Magistrate's going to make their life a little bit more difficult. Yeah, so they get to take an extra turn. They're different than the Wells, so the way the Remnants work are, um, basically, if they're in a two-shard deck, if, they are, if they're one of your first three resources, they deal two damage to you. So they always make you a threshold, but they have a chance to hurt you depending on what your other resources you've played the, in the turn are. Yep, and they're just casting these Mastery of Times as basically Explorers, right? So they can kill some of my board here, which is a little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. That's yeah, the eyes of the heart. The fact that they were able to kill my Drown Train is a big deal. They can actually kill my wise magistrate with these, right? They can sack this to exhaust him and then double 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 damage him. I think we're actually gonna die here. These sapphire race combo decks are really good. Ch 
Sure, sure. But they're gonna they're gonna be able to kill us eventually. And they're drawing enough cards that these uh, four damage worth of troops might be enough. Yeah, it's really a really a shame we stumbled in that second game. If we would have had a better shot there. Here it looks like we're just gonna die. It's like half a turn too slow. Wise magistrate and uh, dark drown shrine not quite enough. Yeah, me too. It makes me a little bit sad that we only have half the remnants at the moment. So, do they have another time walk? They have another time walk. We're dead. It's, um, it's not really quite akin to morph, so it's basically like my opponent suspending my card. It's kind of more similar to the suspend mechanic. That, that's got to give them a, a time walk, right? Well, I guess they've played five of them already, so there's only three left in their deck. And they can't really can trip into them at this point. Just, you know? Yeah, that's a good way to, that's a good way to describe it, Stark. That's a scour the archive. Do they have a shard they haven't played yet? Is this Hearthstone? What's going on, Dilly? Thanks for the 24-month 24, 24 resub. Okay. They can, like, kill some of my stuff here, I guess. Are they gonna shoot some of my things with these? I don't think they can kill enough of my stuff, right? They can only kill three of my things. So they can kill two more of my thing. Oh, I guess they can kill two more of my things and leave me with, with ones that aren't lethal with the Cyclone Shaper as a blocker. I guess we'll, we'll see what we draw. It's a good draw. This could potentially give me lethal. I guess they could have a rune bind here or a transmog. Oh, and then this means, this means I don't have lethal. But I guess they also, they also like lose their pressure here, right? I think I'm obligated to attack. They're gonna, they're gonna keep the Cyclone Japer. Okay, maybe I was just supposed to loot here instead of playing the, the Howling Plains out. To try and put this back into play. There's a good chance they get a rune bind here too. They're gonna shoot my wise magistrate here, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah, but if I if I don't do that, then they get to kill this for free. I don't know if they have a if they have a master of time, I'm just gonna concede. I think I, I think I should have done this to try and hit a shard to lock this. It would have been bad if they had rune bind, but it would have been bad for me regardless. I think we're just going to get beat out by the storm clouds at this point. I just like don't have enough attackers. I'm just can see instead of watching them masturbate. Maybe it'll be maybe it'll be a quick evening. Yeah. Yep, yep. That was a good, good coin flip to win. Handful of three and four drops, not good enough.
Oh, I forgot to change this to Swift Strike. I forgot to change this to Swift Strike. I guess I'm gonna keep this. It needs a it needs a wild on two. It needs a third shard. If, it, if we had a wild on if we had a wild on two, this hand's actually great. But if we don't, it's pretty terrible. I guess we could also just like hit a, a diamond two drop that's castable. Their champion for three charges creates speedy units called dreadlings. The number of dreadlings they get, excuse me, is gonna vary based on what type of troops they have in play. Our martyrs are really bad here. going for us at least this guy whenever he hits my opponent he makes all of our things bigger which is nice let's see what they're able to put together in the play no yeah yeah the hearthstone numbers the hearthstone numbers were as bad as the hex numbers are so i'm just i'm playing hearthstone or hex depending on whatever has my interest at a given time pretty good so these guys say whenever they have an artifact into play under their control we take a damage and these guys are artifacts so this is a mostly free block they're gonna sack it here and we'll take six looks like we're pretty dead I assume I'm dead next turn. This is big enough to block here, not that it really matters. I assume there's like a Dread Apprentice in my future. It's a Crusader. I'm not quite dead yet. Yeah, it's Flight on Attack. It's wrong. It should be Swift Strike. And I'm probably going to change up my gems altogether in an aggressive matchup here. I think I want to block here and just take six. No, that, that's a major gem. So what you're thinking of is a major gem. So that's that's different than what I have in mind now. So I guess I'm technically not dead. So I'll keep attacking with this so I can make this bigger. This guy's pseudo-evasive anyways, except for double shard guys. So we're dead to any speed unit here, but we're going to be pretty dead to those regardless. Yeah, so... The, someone's asking about why the casting costs are different on these cards. So if it's white like this, that implies that the card is not legal and standard. Dead to a cremate, dead to a coin. Yep. All right, so customizable cards are great because we can adjust them in matchups like this. So these guys... I'm gonna put Life Drain on, since we're playing against an aggressive deck. These guys have a major socket. There's a major, what is it? Gain health equal to this troop's defense. Sign me up. In a relics, these guys should have Swift Strike on them. I think. And Martyr's pretty, Martyr's pretty bad here. I think I'm just going to straight up trade these for Totem Traps here. These are cheaper and they deal three damage when attacking your blocking unit. Yeah, yeah, the fact that you can change, change your gems during reserves is quite excellent. Do I want anything different on the Protector Defender here? Are there any major diamond ones that are good on him? I don't think so. Major Wilds.
I guess I could put Fleet Swift Strike on him. No, I think I just want to leave Anthem so we kill them faster. I mean, they don't have that many 4-4s. Four they have a very limited number of 4-4s. Four and, like, if they're, if they're attacking in with... Uh, I guess I'm keeping this on the play. So this is the remnant I was talking about. So again, you play this, and then you get to pick one of your two, one of your two threshold types, and then because it's my first resource, I take two points of damage from it. So not ideal in an aggressive matchup, but better than not having to play my colors. That's actually pretty good. So Howling Brave makes an extra resource for me, so I get to go. Boop you, play Howling Plains Alpha, which makes a Valor power up for me. And then play Intrepid Conjurer. Triple Totem Trap is like not really where I want to be in life, but that's what it is. No, it would still deal two damage. So the, the question the resource asks when whether or not it's going to deal damage to you is, do you already have two of each of your colors? web spawn i don't really care about that sweet we're just gonna run them down pretty quickly here so i'm gonna go ahead and valor this and i'm gonna smash with everything because this can deal damage to a blocking troop too so if he wants to block with the wicked web spawn on my howling brave which is free we get to we get to kill it before he can use it to scrounge or whatnot Yeah, on the, on the play here, like, the last game, not only were we missing a threshold, but, like, my hand didn't do anything till turn three, so not only were we on the play this game, but we get to do him the business. Howdy, Ducklet. This card do. Whenever another troop you control, sacrifice it, remove all of them, transform it into Hop Hero Elite. Sacrifice him and turn him into Hop Hero. It's got, like, levels up. Yeah. yeah, the opponent's playing a three shard deck, which in general is a little bit greedy. Do I need to do this? I guess I'm going to wait on this. I'd rather just uh, rather save that for turn I need to push through. It's a shame these aren't aren't reach. No, you can only you can only use put, have four copies of each gem, so you can't you can't have an unlimited copy, unlimited amount. So just like there's a four X limit on each card that you can play, there's a four X limit on each gem as well. Sure. I have a bunch of redlings. It's, it's a good thing they don't have a war machinist here. It doesn't surprise me if they're not attacking with the rest of these. This is going to turn into a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. This only gives until end of turn, right? Yeah, I think he didn't realize what Hop Hero did. It's a good hit. <laughs> I didn't realize that cost of mana to activate. That's so much worse. Yeah. Yeah, it is, Bob. It's real bad.
All right, so they should be dead here. Because of Crush and Totem Trap. He's just dead. I think on the draw, I'm going to put Flight and Swift Strike in these. Just so I can be a little bit more defensive. Is that better? I think I'm going to put Flight and Swift Strike on those in the draw so they can block a little bit better. Or so a little bit of evasive, but they can block a whole lot better. And one of the things to keep in mind too, if you're playing standard in Hex, like there, there's a lot of gems that I'm looking at there. So in Immortal, just like all the cards in Hex are legal, um, all of the gem customizations that exist for the game are legal. So there's a lot more gem customizations in Immortal than there are in standard. Uh, I have no idea offhand how much this deck costs to build. Yeah, so when you're playing Hex, each player has what's called a battle board associated with whatever deck that they're playing. And um, so my battle board is the forest one that we've been seeing, and this looks like their battle board is this fire one. What's going on, Darth? Yeah, I was going to play some Hex before I went to bed this evening anyway, so I figured I might as well fire up the stream. It's unfortunate that... So the, the well is a dual resource, but... It only makes you a threshold if you already have one of your two thresholds. So if, if I lead on this Well of Life, it won't give me a color. So I can't start on that one. I'm going to have to start on Howling Braves here. Or start, play Howling Braves on two. That sand would have been insane if I could have played Howling Brave on one. Shame my thresholds didn't line up. It's just a 2-2 with speed, right? I think I'm just playing my Braves out here. If I hit a Shard next turn, it lets me go Arden Crusader into Protector Defender, which is a good curve. If I miss on a Shard, I can just play Arden Crusader still and then like poke them for one. Yeah, I haven't really had time to put anything together, Ember Cool. My, my whole schedule has just been fucked with the kids being sick this week. Just everything's behind. And deals double damage, can't be blocked by troops with power less than this troop. So I assume they're going to hit us for two here because they know we're not blocking. Shard. No, yeah, the resource system in Hex is much better. Alright, any, any fucked up blood moons? Um... You can just pull up, you can pull up Hex PvP tools, Ember Kool-Aid, and browse for the, the decks that have been doing well. Do I want to play this and get, I guess I actually don't have Life Drain going from that, right? I actually don't have anything going from either of these things until I draw another diamond. It says Swift Strike, so it can block. It can block this 2-2 at least. We're about to take a fuck ton of damage. They're going to hit this, which is going to deal 3 to us. Sure. And then it's going to make this bigger, and this deals double damage. So we're going to take 12 here. 13, 14. It looks like we're pretty dead. I guess maybe I should have left my martyrs in. Knew that they're... Even, even martyring here isn't that good for me though, right? Yeah, we're just very dead. Yep. <laughs> Splat. I didn't think this deck was very good. In fact, I'm probably going to delete it. I have a different different Ardent deck loaded up here in my deck editor that I was thinking about, too. The 
delete that one already? I don't think I did. Yeah, that one's pretty bad. 